Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Cafecito Time. It's your boy Chingo Bling. I have my beautiful, magnificent, wonderful Mrs. wife. Bling. Mrs. Blang, we have DJ producer Big Rob in the building. What to do, everybody? Woo-woo. And we have comedian Juan Perez in the cut. He hey. might have to jump. Hey. On. He, he, he might have to jump on the mic. Oh my God! Do that again. Look how good the light. Is. Look at that camera. I mean, y'all look real 3D right now. Uh, which reminds me, Juan, we pres- we got to remember to take this camera because I want to film my sets in Addison Improv. When Come is that, Chingo? November fourth, fifth, and sixth. Get your tickets now. Uh, expected to sell out. Magnificent room. Great room for comedy. And uh, we're gonna bring some new new heat. It's funny because I was talking. I don't know who I was talking to. Someone said that they didn't like that room because it goes into L. Mm, okay. And I said I love that room because it's so small. And I I just low ceilings. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I'm not a comic, right? But for me, I I feel like whenever we do theaters, I just feel like I can't reach anybody. And I'm not even the one performing. But I feel like they're so far. Yeah. Like, hey. Can you hear me? Type I, of thing. Hey, can I talk to you about politics? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you should, don't you want to say six feet apart, though? Midterms are days away. <gasps> Bro, the best clip I saw was of a... What's that? She's beautiful. She used to be a, a news reporter. Carrie Lake? Running. I think she's gorgeous. She is pretty, Isn't yeah. she? Her skin is just like... Her confidence. She's poised. Very. And she knows her very, shit. And she's like... The way she, she shuts down to, the liberal media. Oh, bro. The best one was whenever she somebody wanted to interview her. It was, I guess, another lib, you know, uh, station. Yeah. And she goes, oh, good to see you without a mask. And then she <laughs> said, oh, she yeah. goes, oh, but we're usually six. She goes, oh, we're outdoors. She goes, oh, and we're also six feet apart. She, she went like that to her. her. And then she said something else. And she basically said, I'm not giving you the, oh, please find, find that clip because okay. it's great damn who showed it oh actually it was on fox's uh youtube channel i think look at me hesitant to say <laughs> where i watched it on why you i scared? know lord these days man uh, look at me uh, let's talk about that trip a uh, shout out to everybody that came out we did a uh a, like a bus a tour. bus tour it was actually called the chingle bling bus tour actually Ooh. but it was an rv tour it was an rv tour <laughs> It was like a little bus. No, nah, it, it was a short, short bus. It wasn't a short it bus. Okay, it was a big it. ass mobile <laughs> RV. Um, I'm gonna tell you some. Uh, I'm gonna say it from my, from me, right? I've never cared about politics. I don't. I half the time never knew who was running except for the president, right? And I think Rob, you and I at one point discussed how no one understands how important your like local election is right, right. Yep. and so but we're always so worried about who the president is right it, but it, technically it, it, it's the local that matters so much because that's who runs our city it's, you know it's so important that jane fonda and uh, will ferrell decided yes. to come down to go vote and put I mean, their walking you know what i don't understand about beto or hispanic what <laughs> put- well, yes but why what, i don't you say about beta well what i don't understand is how hispanics are not mad that he's trying to act like he's hispanic like why aren't we because like, they think that he's he's gonna do he's look out for them in in their best interests because he gets very emotional about like tragedies that happen well i'm gonna tell you something that i i um because i'm a chit chatter we all know that right don't talk about and um i talk to everybody and chatty, so pa- chatty patty chatty I, kathy what did i what did, who what information did i get babe and i got the whole game your social or what I got the whole info. I was like, well, that was easy. And I said, I, I, we were, I don't know where we were, where I was talking to somebody and I was like, I got, I got the info, how much money was raised, how much money was paid. Like I didn't even need to, we were on the bus. They gave you the profit and loss sheet. Yeah. When we were talking, I was like, well, she just gave me all the info, but it's funny. Like I asked one question and I'm able to get like all this information, you know, you make people feel comfortable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I try. And so, um, what I she's observed, a magnet of cheese like a sponge <laughs> of cheese <man. laughs> Damn, why you gotta be cheese man? Coffee and cheese man. Um, what I learned this this past weekend, it was really a cool thing, right? For for one, like I said, I've never been into politics. I've never cared. Um, I think on my podcast we've discussed that the reason why now is probably because they're going after the kids. They're going after the kids, and I have children. And then two. I'm actually a homeowner now. I actually have to buy groceries for my taxpayer. entire my taxpayer. <laughs> I mean, I paid taxes before, but yeah, yeah. I'm single. Yeah. It's a different, it's totally different, you know? So meeting different people, okay, going to these smaller towns and listening to 
people who were not into politics, right? They just became to saw the problem and decide, decided we've got to take over. Um, I'm talking about Jim Wells County, mm-hmm. the lady there. In I mean, Alice, Texas. In Alice, Texas. Mm, a lot I of mean, family in Alice. She just explained, um, you know, how hard they're just trying to fight just to get like roads and uh, yeah, yeah. E- sewer- some kind of economic opportunities. But like the Rio Grande Valley, see in Houston, we, we'd be like, yo, look at the murder rate, carjackings, catalytic converter. Like it's all kind of bullshit crime happening. Homicides, drive-bys. And we'll talk about homicides too, what they'd said at church. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, big time. And then... <laughs> And then in the RGV, they're like, bro, some of the colonia, some of the neighborhoods don't even have proper infrastructure like sewage. You know what I mean? Like the running city water so that they can get proper electrical stuff. And they were telling me, even in San Antonio, in the outskirts, uh, Juan, you might know what area, but uh, we met a couple. They're, they're both mechanics or started off. I guess she's like a supervisor. Oh, yeah. But like they started off as mechanics on the jets and the planes for like Air Force One even uh, oh, wow. at Boeing, mm-hmm. at Boeing, mm-hmm. right? And they were telling us, because we met them at the other, it was kind of like a Chingle Bling Town Hall meeting. Don't tell them about. It was really cool, Without though. CNN. But, but anyway, they, that couple that works at Boeing, they were telling us how um, in some of those areas in the outskirts, I think south of San Antonio, like southeast or somewhere, mm-hmm. I can't remember. She said where there's like dirt roads and ambulances can't even get to certain areas and houses because of just how the roads are and mm. he said he saw one time the dude one had to kid like was truck choking it. a baby was choking and homo had to truck it with the equipment yes the to go because there's no roads hop out of the ambulance yes and what yeah yes. you can't access Damn. Uh, yeah so this is asker san antonio yes so my point is we have like these federal issues you got these statewide issues and then locally it varies so San Antonio might have a different type of crime than what Houston has. You know, they might have different types of drug use mm-hmm. than what Houston has. Mm-hmm. Different type of homelessness issues. You know. Have you guys voted yet? Not yet. No, okay. not yet. Okay. We're gonna go um, before we leave out of busy, town. For bro. Sure. Yeah, yeah, busy, bro. Yeah, busy, busy. If I showed busy. you my but my gonna... planner right now, and you you'd be like, yeah, even more than usual. I'm I mean, mean uh, well, you, what time did I send you the update? Oh, it was, it was like, like one in the yeah, morning. Yeah, one in the morning. Yeah. yeah. So shout out to my wife. I definitely want to say this because on the way up here, I was thinking about this. I'm the type of person where after I was at an event, you know, all day at Azteca Farmer's Market with my family <laughs> and I'm having to talk to la raza. Tenemos que, astro, sí, puro. tenemos que votar nuestros valores y, <laughs> you know, familia, you know, patria, Dios, you know, Dios, familia, patria, <laughs> trabajo, esfuerzo. Yeah. ¿Qué queremos? No queremos handouts, raza, you know. <laughs> El yab, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I start getting all conspiracy. <laughs> no vino de un pinche caldo, caldo de murciélago. <laughs> well, after doing that all day, do you think I want to go over the uh, schedule? the schedule of the week at midnight? After I done hit the weed, popped half a gummy, took a shower, stretched, look at a couple jujitsu tutorials, might hit some fucking bicicletas. Das, mm-hmm. das, trying to hit about 100 bicicletas and shit. But my wife, bro, when I say that I found the woman for me. Uh, we Be- need like little hearts hey, going up like this. Because right when it comes to paperwork, she faced the problem head on. <laughs> she she, had no she opened. She opening up all the mail. I know, but if if I was just, which I would never. This is hell on earth. If I were just like single with no family, yeah. that'd be hell on earth. Sure, because. But I know that I would be Mister Simplification. It'd be like. I want the, I'd be like Kanye. Like, why is he always wearing those boots and that Carhartt jacket? Because it'd be like, I don't want to have to be bogged down figuring out, you know, laundry and when I'm of this and what subscription is that and, and move this from there. I'd, I'd be like, like Kanye. He'd just be walking around and shit. Who want to interview me? <laughs> <laughs> just walking on the street. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Chico Bling. I know somebody want the exclusive right now. Put your cell phone out. Sir, what about you? <laughs> you? You on the gram? Follow me on the gram. <laughs> Um, but no, like Marisol, her skill set on top of just everything else oh, she got going for her, bro. Like, you know, when you see the manager of a Chick fil A, they'd be like, Okay, I need Susie to come in 10 a.m. <laughs> on Saturday because we close on Sunday, yeah. And then I need Bobby, the manager, to make sure he or the other manager, right, make sure he's there up and early to open on Monday, uh, because we closed on Sunday. Like, Marisol got the planner, the all the baby's things, the kids' activities, what the babysitter might need, and the schedule, and the event, and the birthday, and the this, and don't forget your your niece's thing is this, and das, 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 das. 
And don't forget Halloween candy and tell Rob at this time. And Juan, don't forget the da da da. How we doing, Dallas? Mm. You know, what, what's the ticket link and how the clicks and the. It's like there's a lot of moving parts. And, and just to throw this out there for everybody that appreciates us as a podcast network, right? All the advertisers, everybody. Sometimes when you sit down and do the schedule and, and stuff starts to fall through the cracks, it's like. We can only be at one place mm. at a time. Mm. So if we're in here podcasting, it's almost like that's time that you're not doing X, Y, Z, A, B, and C, and mm. one, two, three. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people be like, oh, Chingo, why you ain't go get your ear checked out? Or why your toenail <laughs> still fucked off? Or you you, you ain't been to jujitsu how many times this week? No, but we've been doing better about you being scheduled for jujitsu. Yeah, I, we've been doing a lot better. Like, way better. So, I'm, so we found a pretty good... I guess a better system, you know, jiu -jitsu. so jiu -jitsu. that it happens and it's not like, well, you didn't get to work out. Yeah. I didn't get to work out. So and that's what all was happening last night at midnight. It's like, okay, who's what? working out? What time when? Because the kids mm -hmm. whoop de woo and she can't miss this. And husband's got to step it up. That was a great uh, ad for the best wife ever. Thank you. You know, it's about cherishing your wife oh, that's and great. your wife got to cheer you on bars we're, we're simple uh shout out shout out to dr dr Ed Young. he said an, a marriage works and how it works is wife cheer your husband on cheer him on husband cherish, cherish your wife he said it's I mean, just cheer and cherish and cherish and cheer <laughs> how simple can it be right i mean that is kind of true if you think about it yeah but women these days don't make it that simple let's be real because that's why you need a traditional woman with traditional type of uh values yes and also like i feel like if you kind of um don't get you no woman that's on her 28th abortion <laughs> oh my god <laughs> man like we were watching veeps and do you ever watch? Oh, have you ever, Veep. No. No? Bro, oh, my God. Have you ever caught at least one episode? No, I need to. I Check need this to. out. Rob. All right. We've talked about it. I love I know. the main character. And, and you say you opened a weed, too. And, <laughs> and, and these two things go together. <laughs> okay. In an ideal situation, we need to find some regular weed for Robert. Regular. Regular weed, no, which is hard to find. Don't shit. nobody got Reggie no more. But, uh, dude, if you could, like... I know you probably like to relax with alcohol, but, like... Just fucking hit the weed one time and watch Veep, bro. Okay. Just so it's like Parks and Rec meets The Office, but it's all political. So yeah. they're but like, how's my ratings with the... It's kind of yeah. referencing, though, like what's happening. Because I was asking Pete, I was like, this is too similar to what's happening right In now. In real life, yeah. Yeah, so I said, because the one, she's running for president, and it's like, and when she gives her speech, she's like, and because they are running... We must, we must make shoes or whatever. Yeah. Like it's, it's like, like Kamala. It's like Kamala. what if she took tips from the show and that's how she's oh giving my her God. speeches? But then there's one that's her. What is it? The campaign manager sleeps with someone else that's on the team, right? That guy's a hoe. He sleeps with all the females, right? So she's like, "Hey, so I'm pregnant." He's like, "Oh, like from who?" And he's like, "You." He's like. You're not trying to keep it, right? And so then it's like, so then she's like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. You know, I'd like to, you know, let's, why don't we try to make this work, you know, like so that we can raise this baby or whatever. So she goes to knock on his door and he's like, she's like, oh, like there's somebody in the back of his, because it was a little one night stand and she got pregnant. And she goes, that's it. She gets on the phone. She's like, yes, I like to schedule an abortion. And she literally is just like aborting. So like and like nothing. It's and it's it's funny, but not funny. Right. Of but course. it's like what's happening right now. It's like real nonchalant. Like I'm going in for an abortion. Big fucking deal. The guy who got her pregnant is the guy who's taking her to get the abortion. And then on top of that, um, uh, after she gets the abortion, right, they're like and she just got an abortion, which basically aligns with who the she's the campaign ma campaign manager of the lady who wants for women to have abortions, you know, because she's like basically her daughter. She can't stand her. Her daughter's like uh, her daughter's um, got depression. The, the the lady that's running for V for vice. I mean, for a president, she's got a daughter. And so she's neglected she's never like she's a lesbian like and she adopted a mixed baby and so she's trying to use the mixed baby to show that she likes black people <laughs> well, it's like a lesbian couple yeah. that ad adopted like a little kid from africa basically damn right? hitting but, all but, the checks but here here's my biggest pitch about this show when you're late at night you know and you're trying to watch a little youtube tv or whatever 
and you're tempted to look at the the newest fear porn of like America's running out of diesel fuel in two days. You know, it's all all this shit's happening before midterms, right? Twenty five days or yeah. whatever, right? You don't want to get you don't want to be stressed out. So my pitch for this product, yeah, Veep, is it almost like makes fun of politics in a way, but it's a it's just a really well done funny show that's a good stress reliever, especially if you're in a little bit of Mary Jane late at night. But um, and we went on this bus tour so we got to kind of like hang out and and work with and be at the same place with people that are running for like county judge and uh precinct this and criminal courts that and dis- board district attorney. attorney yeah school board what director of some sort yeah um i just people wanna, running for congress i just want to say this um a lot goes into a lot of work boy. a lot of work and let me tell you something. Comedy touring is so much easier. Yes. <laughs> Big time. I yeah. mean, it's like... It, it's kind of grueling. My message, whenever I sent them an email for thanking them for this opportunity, right, this past weekend, I said, thank you for all that you do in trying to make America great again. Mm-hmm. I'm not kidding. It was that much. Like, we sat back mm-hmm. and just watched this, like, chaos it's of this. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. It was like... Uh, and, and you know what? So many things came to mind throughout this whole experience. But one of the things that came to mind, well, as we were in San Antonio at Pica Pica Plaza. Juan, you know where that is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's, huh? Southwest. Yeah, Southwest. Mm-hmm. Damn, my bad. I thought it was on the oh, Southeast. No, south, southeast. Okay, Southeast. Right mm-hmm. Southeast. Uh, is that like by McCrellis Mall or anything like it's, that? It's by, uh, Isn't it military, they said? Yeah, military and Roosevelt. Okay, so when I, when I was at Pica Pica, uh, there's a barbershop right there, and um, homeboy uh, faded me up real quick, and he, they're playing my music videos and stuff, and everyone's like, oh, Chingo, what you doing here, bro? And, or we're walking around that, it's like an indoor flea at Pica Pica. We were at the event center next door in the same plaza, but as we're meeting people and the vendors at the flea, uh, people are like, oh, hey, man, I met you one time, or hey, you used to da-da-da, or whatever. It reminds me that I've been campaigning for a long time. I've been shaking the hands, meeting the people. And just because we're out, you know, you might be buying barbacoa or something. And people are like, oh, shit, what's up, Chingo? Or, hey, I like your videos. And we've been campaigning. And every, I think I texted you this, Rob. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody that's a business owner, I mean, I don't know about, like, service people, you know, like plumbers and stuff like that. But, like, if you're a stand-up comedian and stuff like that, you're, you're campaigning. Except you're not saying, hey, remember me at the ballot or vote for me. Check the box. It's like, hey, follow me, subscribe. I got merch. I'll be in town next week. You know, buy your tickets. Um, but but definitely we did see firsthand and we experienced like how grueling it is of like getting on the RV, stopping here, uh, meet at the lobby at this time. Uh, you're doing a breakfast meet and greet at this place and people are going to want to talk to you. And you got to get up there and give like a little speech. So at Farmers, what is it, Azteca Farmers, Farmers Market, Market is where the Houston event was. And I was, I was up there freestyling, talking about finding a way to encourage people to vote. I mentioned, I was like, hey, all these people that, that are running for, you know, judge and all these different positions. I was like, they've missed volleyball games, soccer games, football games. They're out there spending all their and free time. And they had to have, Rob, because the amount of time that it goes into campaigning. Mm-hmm. Where, like, where mm-hmm. can you possibly make it to your kid's event or even make it home in time for mm-hmm. dinner? Like Alex Miller didn't make it to Azteca Farmers. We're days away. Mm-hmm. I think she's in the lead, but it's one of those where it's like, man, I got, you know, I got a family too. She does. <laughs> Cause I asked why wasn't she there? Right. And so they were saying, well, that's kind of like her family day. And that speaks volumes to me. The fact that you were like, yeah, I'm running for this and this is important, but mm-hmm. my family is also yeah, important. I got ads running. Yeah. We'll be at the zoo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that says a lot to me as yeah. a person who's Turn running like on. you. You want to see me. She <laughs> ain't playing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's not playing about family. You know what I'm saying? Like my family's important and I'm not going to neglect my family just because I'm part of, you know, something. I'm sure when she makes it... I, it's going to be probably a little bit different. I don't think it's going to be, I don't know how she's going to do family, but I guess Sunday she ain't going to work. Yeah. It's Lord's Hey, we like Chick-fil-A baby. But yeah, it was grueling. Like you, we, you uh meeting up in the lobby early in the morning, you going to have chilaquiles, but you're also talking politics. And there was like a Japanese news crew. I think they're based out of Washington DC though. Um, 
Orlando Sanchez mentioned that there was like a French reporter, a, French a German reporter. reporter, like all eyes on Texas. He said Texas, we're, South very, Texas. we're one of the most interesting states right now. Always, yeah. it's like that every election cycle, honestly. So we're one of the interesting states. He said. So let me ask you this real quick. Yeah. Uh, how do you guys, since you know, you, Monty Sala said several times that like you weren't super involved with everything, right? So how did it make you look at politics in general from the perspective of like uh, the top, the president, down to like your local elections and all the people running? I'll let you just question, as a whole, just like question politics. is like, what? How's your outlook on politics changed since not being involved at all to being super involved? Uh, I mean, well, I feel like there's a lot at stake. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe things accelerated and things revealed themselves with when you have like a polarizing person like Trump who says things like the media, the, the journalists, they're fake, they're all fake. You know, this is fake news. And at first, I was like bro freedom of the press like you can't have politicians i mean um reporters and journalists not be able to do their job and you can't call them fake and what about the the public's confidence and they're holding truth to power and they're doing their job they're asking the tough questions and you just don't like it and then slowly you realize oh they were wrong about that 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 they lied about that they said this but it wasn't that they framed this person this way this was a hoax these tiki torch motherfuckers were paid you know what i mean yeah. and you just going no that wasn't that that wasn't fiery and mostly peaceful or or what have you and i just feel like when you get into like the spiritual warfare metaphor analogy whatever it's kind of like you start to catch wind of some of the evil demonic things borderline satanic it's like bro y'all really want to abort babies at nine months you know and then just like the lies and the spin and the manipulation uh, and i'm not saying republicans don't lie mm -hmm. yeah these are all humans yeah. you know and i'm you got sure they fucking do yeah exactly you have different kind of republicans just like you have some different are, kind yeah of some are sellouts yeah. there's some democrats I read some shit today that said that a lot of them are saying peace out and just kind of coming over to the Republican Party because they can't deal anymore with all the shenanigans that they're they're trying to push. You know, it's like. How many more letters are you going to add to LGBTQ? You know, because oh, uh, it doesn't end there. Wait, yeah. Pastor Dr. Ed Young, right? So, yeah, he said there's like a, no, a new one now. He which was like means, LGBTQQIA plus. The, 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 yes, the, which the, means the, what was quilted it? quicker picker upper? No, <laughs> son. It was like quilted queer or something. And it's like <laughs> a mosh posh hash. It's just. Look that up, Rob. Yeah, let me see what quilted queer gives me. Y'all got to start looking into some of these sermons bro these sermons be fire listen i just um in my perspective from everything is this is um i don't care what way you vote vote whoever the f, f you want to vote right yeah you have options if you want the government telling you you got to buy a hundred thousand dollar electric vehicle then hey vote that way do whatever you want but whatever it is that you are doing right or however it is that you are going to make your decision really read up on that shit. at least be informed and be informed and don't read cnn guys and don't read fox news shit either like literally find real facts real information follow so rpt that, exactly so that you can get you know make decisions based on real shit you know what i'm saying and all you got to do is see who's been right who's been correct and who's always wrong all the time who's always lying to you oh there he goes Okay. LGBTQIA the quilt, plus the quilt, quilt bag. There it is. All right. So uh, G, <laughs> G, That's the G, clip of the G L G L B T are also used for similar meanings. Okay. Although the Q usually means queer, it is sometimes used to mean questioning. Quilt bag is an is an alternative with additional meanings for each letter. That's so <laughs> so what the fuck? I still what? Didn't really what go does down. that Can mean? You go down? Because um, pa Pastor oh, Young... Oh, meaning... Pastor Young plus covered it. Oh, wait. You might have to pull up the... Uh, meaning. Let's see. Okay. Let's, so okay, it's going okay, to each, each yeah, go letter, babe. So, Q. What's the next Q? Oh, also, I want to mention that um, they had some news people there yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I got on camera, right? And I was like, well, where's this going? They didn't give it to us. Go ahead, Chinga. You might have to pull the homeboys. Oh, but look. Look, the flags mean over here. It's too many. Sexual orientation, asexual spectrum. <laughs> they don't got the quote, queer. Quote back, Keep quote going. Back, they don't have flag. Okay. Gender they quilt, identity, gay. Quilt, quilt bag. They don't have the quilt bag. Gender one. fuck. What Gender is that? Gender fuck. Achillean. 
Asexual spectrum. Gender fuck. Y'all are playing now. They're making shit up, dog. Y'all are making <laughs> shit up now. It used to just be les- lesbian. L and G. Yeah, exactly. They're all just trying. Tra- the trans language uh, primer. primer. Quote bag. Quote the bag. Trans the trans language, language primer. primer. Okay, what does well, that even mean? I don't know, but I'm going to get a virus on my computer now. You might have <laughs> the quote bag virus. You might have to pull up Dr. Edgy. What does it say? An alternative well, to LGBTQA plus stands for queer questioning. Inter- it's, it's a whole thing. like quil- Intersex, indie gender, lesbian, transgender. Oh, two, so you're all two of spirit, them? It's like a quilt. Two spirit, uh, two spirit bisexual, asexual, agender. Brain just a, went. <laughs> agender, arrow. What? Aromantic, gay, gender queer, gender nonconforming. So, example, PD, why they got to put PD? <laughs> PD liked using quilt bag as their community identifier because they felt it was easier to pronounce and carried less emotional and political baggage than oh, LGBTQI. God. So, it's an alternative. It's a quilt bag. PD likes quilt wow, bag. Wow, guys. Okay, can you pull up Dr. Ed Young? Queedy, are we gonna Queedy. get in trouble for posting a piece of his? Petey likes quilt bag. Wow, do you think? Are we? Are we gonna get dinged? Um, if we have patrons for this show, yeah, not yet. Uh, though, I right? know we just started We're testing, it out. We're <laughs> testing it out. We don't even know if people like it. People even like to listen. Uh, so where were we? We were talking about this bus tour. Yes, and I was and it was saying, interesting. I just learned a, a lot, and uh, I have respect for people who are part of campaigns and have to be out there campaigning. Yeah, uh, and getting on the phone, getting knocking on, the phone, on doors. Knocking on doors. Not only that, you're also like... Um, trying to encourage all of the the candidates running to come attend these events so that people who attend these events are informed and understand. Uh, while we were at the event in McAllen, because it was outdoors at their headquarters, uh, we had a heckler out there, just wouldn't stop honking. Uh, Somebody had pulled up with mm-hmm. their headlights. And just was trying to fuck up everything. Yeah. But it, I didn't even notice because the, the stage thing was the street. The avenue was right behind us. Yeah. I forget which street that was, but it was like right behind us. So you know, I thought it was just excited. Like, oh, they're really excited back there. Like, I got to go. I mean, you're, you you know, sometimes. He wasn't on yet. I forgot who was uh, on, but. And then, uh, yeah, I don't remember. I think I saw it though at the end, but. um, You were like, is that a heckler? We were. Uh-huh. Yeah. I was like, yeah, totally. And they had to go over there. I was like. That's... I mean, I, I when I first noticed, I don't know if you noticed, I thought I was going to have to turn into baby Glock. <laughs> Did you notice? You were just asking, am I have to go over there? I was like, there's police officers. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have to go yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, She did say, she's like, there's cops. I was yeah, like, all right, like, okay, bet. I'm going to go ahead and let them go first. They're going to be the A team. There was a whole party go, of Go ahead and holster it. You know, baby Glock. Go ahead and holster it. Because you know, <laughs> go ahead and holster it, baby Glock. Because you know, sometimes backup take too long. I was like, I was already thinking, like, if some shit went down, how I was going to instruct everybody where I was going to make people evacuate to. Oh. Because we were at the GOP, Hidalgo County GOP uh, headquarters. headquarters. So I was going to make everybody run in the building and maybe have some of the men huddle by the, by the stage. And then I was going to stand firm, feet planted, 10 toes down, attacking problems head on. Hand at three o'clock already, Listen, ready to go. I'm about- I already knew I was going to grab my chair and run backwards with that bitch like this. See? I was not going to get Right? We done thought all this. I did. Come on. Shit. I was, I like, was already I'm thinking not- how I was going to instruct the men. But you got to, I, I was like, we're going to have to go separate ways. Like, all the men, chest to the We got to split up. You do. Everybody's still being charged of the women and, ki- and, uh, and children. Mr. and Mrs. Smith over here. Yeah. yeah. You go left, I go right. All women and children in the building with Mighty Sword. <laughs> Come all on. The, all the men, get your rifles. Get up. And then when it was another, like, all right, holster, baby. Lock holster. It's cool. Yeah, hold. On my command. Do you want to end with the Carrie Lake clip that you asked for at the beginning of the show? <laughs> yes. So this was a good old Carrie is, Lake. Look at her. Giving it to him. Hi, Harry. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you. Come off and see you You don't have a mask on anymore. Uh, What's going we're on? Outside. Give a well, minute to well, chat. Well, we're six feet apart. <laughs> do you have a minute to chat? Um, I'll do an interview. Okay. As long as it airs on CNN+. Plus. <laughs> Does that still exist? Yeah. I didn't think so because the people don't like what you guys are peddling, so, which is propaganda. Thank you. you. <laughs> took, oh my God! Took total control. <laughs> that was so funny, bro. Okay, scroll up. Who posted so this? Fire. She, she did. She did. And I like. Okay, such an amazing campaign, bro. I think they outspent her on the other team. I think so. But she, such an amazing campaign, so and, effective. And they're they're trying to insult her, and she comes back with the best. Fuck. She doesn't even insult you back. That's what's awesome. You want to know my Carrie Lake moment? What? Remember, I mentioned that yesterday at the farmers market they had a news person, but I didn't know if it was gonna be a hit piece. Mm. So they called me over, 
And uh, he's all like, you know, I'm watching his body language. Like, bro, is this a setup? Are you going to edit some shit? So, of course, I'm recording on my end. Mm-hmm. I'm getting audio just so I can have <laughs> the fucking unedited version. And then I asked him, I was like, so where is this going to air? And he mentioned, like, the stations and stuff. And then he's like, don't worry. If I ask you something you don't like, you know, uh, you have permission to strike me. I said, uh, I'm not much of, a, much of a striker. I'm more of a grappler myself. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Glock, nice to meet you. White belt, no stripes. Don't get it twisted, but Don't y'all. test me. Don't I was like, me, I though. will text Eddie Bravo right now. Dog. <laughs> I will pull up a tutorial right now. Pull up a tutorial. You ever heard of a twister? I'll show you. Mm-hmm. No, but chair. seriously. No, no, no. Real talk, real talk, though. Um, midterms are... Um, the last day to vote is November 8th, guys. I don't care who you vote for, but I actually do. But, um, but whatever you do, just, um, be smart about who you're picking. Do not just vote blue because you've been told to vote blue or because, you know, that's just the way you voted. Same thing with voting red. If you've always, you just been told to vote red and that's how you vote. Then... Sound like you calling out Rob, bro. <laughs> You know, then always you know, been red. If you're not informed, just don't vote. Yes. It's just simple. Thank if you're not informed, you. don't That's vote. That's what I was going to say. If you're Bill Burr, was... just don't vote. All right. If you're Bill Burr, just don't don't vote. Bill Burr. Yeah. What did he say? I mean, he constantly just talking shit about not being informed. So I hope people like him aren't voting. He was on Tim's uh, Tim uh, Tim oh, Dillon's podcast. Oh, he brags about on, not being yeah. informed. He literally, you know, he was talking about Newsom, and, and Bill Burr is like, who, "Who's that? I don't know who that is." You know, the, oh, the governor. Wow. Oh, I knew his name was Gavin, but I didn't know his last name was Newsom. I was like, oh, oh okay. Wow. Pelosi, who's Pelosi? You know. So if you're going to be that person, just don't vote. Bro, but what about Pelosi's husband? That's for another episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the hammer. He got hammer. Ha- he got hammered twice. Yeah, there's... Oh, and somebody on CNN, I think, or somebody, or Fox, I'm sorry, made a, a comment or made said a, a joking statement was like, basically sucks that that happened, right? We should send Pelosi to go be with her husband. And they made a fucking big ass deal about it. He got fired from CNN? I don't know if he got fired. No, I think it was somebody from Fox. Basically, like he was just not empathetic. He was just not caring. How dare you say that, right? Because they were saying, oh, looks like Pelosi needs to leave Washington or wherever she was Uh at the time to go be with her husband, you know? Like, and they were like, what's that? But basically, like, what was that supposed to mean? You know? That's the wife. Should probably go take care of the husband. Mm. One thing they were I heard this morning they were talking about it, it was like and it's so it's so true and it's like they're public servants how are they millionaires and so that's what the things you should question super, guys super, and I'm gonna leave super. it on that note okay. you did, know? did you ever see the clip Sav do we play it on RPT Sav with one in uh, of her interviewing uh, they played it on Rock and Roll James she was on the UT campus asking people who are you gonna vote for are you able to vote are you gonna vote and they're like oh, I'm from for better like, oh yeah 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 oh yeah. can you name one reason why you're leaning that way I don't know. Uh, I'm not really into politics much. So I just yeah. know that I like that too. I didn't really brush up on everything before this interview. So yeah. And, like, so and then why? one of them I said, just you like know, about the whole abortion thing. You know, the whole abortion thing. The whole abortion thing. The whole abortion thing. You don't thing. even yeah, know. Totally. You just, it's That's the what whole I'm talking about. Those thing. people just shouldn't vote. And it's the, fine. And, so, the, yeah, and the only people that did know why they were voting a certain way were the people that were like, I'm for Abbott. And it's because this, this, and this. And, and one of them wasn't even from here. He's a foreign exchange student. He's like, but I plan on being a physician. And Might as well face a well, yeah. foreign exchange student, bro. Yeah, the, the and kids. he gave facts and facts. facts about why he was voting for Abbott. Yeah, he wasn't a quilt bagger like that other dude. <laughs> yeah, a little quilt bagger. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I actually I showed a clip. I showed a piece of it to my fourteen year old, and I was like, "This is what." college i was like these college education stuff i was like unless you study in something like super in demand and specific like you're just not going in not going to get indoctrinated and you're going to actually come out a coder or engineer or whatever i was like this is what colleges produce these days they're all you know they assigned them an opinion they brainwash them they indoctrinate them and they end up in debt and then they can't pay their bills because they ain't got no fucking useful skill <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't use those words but uh <laughs> but yeah y'all go check that out sabbath one in yeah and if again inform yourself continue to inform yourself this is not a political podcast no it's not holiday season holiday season if you're in the houston area go by the rice village a uh stop at the hive uh mighty soul has a bunch of different items i mean shades accessories say as of november 1st yo girl expanded i no longer just have a rack 
Because that's how I started off. Racks on racks. Started off with a rack. I started off with the little rack, and now I'm actually on some wall space. A wall space. Got a little bit of wall space and a rack and a rack. Wall and a rack. Started with a rack. Now we here. Know what I'm saying? Busted through the wall. Had a cafecito. Now my vision real clear. And I started with a rack. Here we stop, go. That's stop, my intro stop, Started song. with a rack. Now we here. Every time I walk hive. into the store at the Hive. No, but seriously, stop by the Hive, guys. It is a uh, pop-up collective, which means we are permanently there, but it's pop-up because there's 13 different female-owned businesses in there. Um, come support local and come support females. Women, y'all like to shop. Come on. It's a boutique and it's popping. And next it's door, poppin'. you can go get a croissant next door. So get your coffee, then uh, come Travis shopping. Scott is across the street. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He wanted to be close to oh, her. Oh, also, parents. if you want to come and shop with your wife, and I know men don't like to do that, we do offer alcohol for the men and beer so that they can sit on the couch that we have on the side while your wife shops. Why have you never told me that? I don't know. Nah. But All that's, right. We tell men, you a lot of stuff, hey, Rob, and you don't be one. Literally, Rob, the minute you, a husband and wife come in, we're like, she walks off and we're like, would you like a beer or a shot? And he's always confused, like, what? Like, it's so funny. We love doing it because they don't expect it. Like, what store have you ever gone to that you're like, would you like a beer? Or a... Uh, Saddle up, gentlemen, we're going. Yeah. yeah, and they cheer you on. Making it a field trip. And one, one time this guy goes, he's like not done with this beer. And he look. I, I swear to you, it's the funniest thing. I wish I would have had this on camera. I, I forgot to tell you. He like had his beer in his hand, right? And she's like, all right, I'm ready. He's like, what? You're ready? Why? He's just like, because I'm ready. He's like, but I'm not done. I'm only my- one in. <laughs> Take your like, time. I've only had one. Like, I've only had one beer. Like, what the what the fuck? You can't be done. He's like, you looked at all the. He's like this. You looked at all the shops. He's like, all of them. He's you, like, you missed it. It was so funny. It was so funny because he was like, bro. And then he's like looking at me. He's like, can I leave with my beer? And I was like, oh, you know, I don't you know, know. you know, yeah, giving your own risk. You know, giving somebody a gift. Rest. It's called the. Uh, reciprocity rule or uh, something like that it's a form of persuasion reciprocity i use well, that all the time the term the law of reciprocity like you it, put it out to the universe and it's going to give it back to you well i don't know but who, it's persuasive too yeah the the owners of the hive that's who invented that or not invented it but that's what they do like they won't ask the they'll ask the female after like would you like a glass of wine or champagne but the guy it's <laughs> did you like a beer and and it's like the first thing we do is if we see a husband and wife come in, it's like okay, go girl. And then it's like, would you like a beer or a shot? And would you like he's a like, bucket? and he's like, what? He's like, come on, we have a couch on the side, and so you sit on the couch, and we just you're right next to the liquor bar, like right next to the where we keep all the liquor and stuff, except for the beer there in the back because they're in the ref- they have to be refrigerated. Nice. So uh, we just kind of tell you, come on, take a seat. Here you go. Yeah. Which drink you won't? Go check out the Hive if you're in right. H Town. Uh, I'll be at the come ad- get a drink, fellas, and let your man, let your girl shop. shop. Get a shop on. So speaking of alcohol and shopping and laughing, I'll be at the Addison Improv November fourth, fifth, and the sixth. Get your tickets now, chinglebling.com, and Sass. we'll holler at you next week. Bye. Sass. See you.